putting a rotary encoder onto a Mac keyboard. Disclaimer, I am a noob and I don't have any education on electronics or Mac keyboards. What you'll need, a keyboard that uses a socketed Pro Micro controller which has a PCB for both MX and Kill low profile switch holes. There's five legs on the encoder that you'll need to connect, so you'll need more holes. So next, go through the QMK tutorial at this link. Install QMK MSYS is a big file. Learn how to make a new key map for your keyboard and kind of play around with the config and key map files and learn how to compile a hex file to flash it to your keyboard. Next, a rotary encoder. I bought this off Malaysia's Shopee from a seller in China for about less than a dollar for three pieces. The encoder that I use has a 6mm diameter shaft with a 14 by 12 by 6mm sized base. The next is a rotary encoder knob. The ones that I have are really thin knobs that were less than a dollar for a 10 pack. The next is a a cheap soldering set and a 0.8mm solder. Having helping hands will help to hold wires in place when you turn them. Wires. I bought the 30AMG ones which were thin and kind of easy to handle and I just melted the plastic instead of doing stripping. And lastly, nippers to circumcise the encoder. So step 0. Install QMK Sys and QMK Toolbox. Make a key map for your keyboard. In your config.h file, insert this. This tells which encoder leg goes to which Pro Microcontroller's pad and tells how sensitive a rotation should be. The higher the number, the lower the sensitivity. Then in your rules.mk file, insert this. And finally, in your keymap.c file, insert this. You can change what the encoder does by changing the KC codes. As for the index for the first or second encoder, you'll have to experiment on these if you're using two encoders, which by the way may behave differently if you don't define which part of the keyboard is the master if you're using a split keyboard. You can set different behaviors on different layers as well. Once you've done everything, then it's just a matter of compiling your key map into a hex file, making sure the size is nice, and then flash the thing into your keyboard. So now comes the easy part of mounting the encoder onto your keyboard. So step one, dismantle your keyboard, the faceplate, PCB, and bottom plate or case. Then you circumcise the encoder, then mount the encoder to the PCB by bending and cutting of getting the legs to grip the holes. If your keyboard is like mine which has hot swap pads uh, because I'm a noob and I don't know how to desolder switches, solder the side of the encoder that has two legs to the hot swap pads. It doesn't matter which leg goes to which side of the pad because pressing down the encoder should behave the same as a key press. Once you've soldered them, press the encoder and see if a key press is registered. So next is to solder the three remainder legs to the three wires. I connected them as so the middle is ground which goes to the second pad on the right side of the Pro Micro, the top leg to the fifth pad and the bottom leg to the sixth pad. These connections should be the same as the pads we defined way back in the config.h file. Now once that's done, try to turn the rotary and see if it does what you programmed it to do in the keymap.c file. And basically that's it. Reassemble the keyboard and now you have a knob on your keyboard. Thanks for watching.